morning, everyone. Let's stand together, please, for our opening hymn, number 939. Number 939. By the hungry heart, with gifts of finest wheat, come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat, as when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare our hearts to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, give to your body, God, and drink of peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, please bring me a small cupful of water to drink. She left to get it and he called out after her, please bring me along a, a bit of bread. She answered, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing bank, baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. 
Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first, make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord has foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, through all generations. Alleluia. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly, as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would, would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. Just as it's appointed that human beings die once, and after this the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and, as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury. For they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. So our Lord Jesus in the gospel today, he took a little break. 
He was in the temple, and he had a seat across from the temple treasury where he just watched the people's coming and going. Well, in a way, we can think of our Lord here in our church, in a sense, our temple, and he too is sitting there leaning against the wall. Of course, I'm talking of the tabernacle. But there our Lord Jesus is here, and it's like our Lord is looking out at the crowd here and observing. And just as long ago, he watched the people approach the temple treasury to make their donations. In a few moments, he's going to watch as we make our donations here in a sense during the, the collection, our, in a way, the, the temple treasury moment here at Mass. And I think that what he observed long ago and what he would see today has some similarities, also some differences. Th there's a significant difference. Long ago, the Jewish leaders of, in, the, in the people in the temple, they would come forward towards the treasury and there were these different uh, things along the wall. They looked like, like, a, like a trumpet horn. Imagine like a funnel. So there's a big opening and it would get narrower. And that's where they would put the coins and money in. It was made of metal. So the more coins you put in, the louder it got, echoed all around, and everyone would know that you made a huge donation. They had no trouble with the idea of people kind of making a big scene of all the money they're putting in to, to support the temple. Then it would go in this horn down the little funnel, the spiral, pass through the wall, and then be in the treasury safe to be able to be used uh, 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 among the, 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 te the temple. Well, also here at Mass, we, we have a difference. We have a much more uh, low-key way of taking up the collection. We don't really allow people to stand up and say, hey, I'm putting in this thousand dollars or I'm putting in whatever and stuff. We don't bang like big whistles or have, have, have uh, uh, bells or things like that. In fact, it's really quite discreet. As the, as the basket comes down the aisle, you know, you put the envelope in. We have no idea. Is that an envelope with a 10 in it, a 20 or a 100 or something? Or is it empty? I don't know. And so uh, it's a little bit more discreet and anonymous, which is a good thing. And then our Lord Jesus looking out as the collection would be taken up here. He, of course, sees and understands that many people in our parish participate in the electronic banking ways to make your donation to the parish. It's a little easier. It helps you when you travel and you so don't forget. So our Lord, he steps above any judgment, kind of like maybe we don't, that we see the basket passes by somebody and, and they don't gesture putting something in there and our fallen human nature might be like, oh, don't you help the parish? Not so fast. Maybe they've done the electronic banking. Maybe they mailed theirs in or something like that. So we shouldn't so much have a judgment of, as the basket slides by somebody. Who knows? They might be donating in a different way. But our Lord also observing long ago and observing today, he would see that, yeah, it's through the donations that the temple long ago, our church here and now, is kept up and is maintained and that we're able to carry out the mission of our parish. It's through the donations. So our Lord looking out from the, the tabernacle or long ago there in the temple, he would have seen people offering and helping support and advancing the mission. But he didn't simply look at the physical actions going on. Of course, as the eternal Son of God, as he sat in the temple long ago, as he sits in our tabernacle today, looking at us, he can see into the depths of our heart, and he can see our attitudes. He can see our motives. He could read our intentions. And so long ago, he would see people that... Maybe it's also people today that might have the attitude, oh, I don't really need to give a donation. The temple back then, the parish now, they don't need the donation. They don't need my money. I don't have much. Let the other people take care of things. So no, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make a donation. 
So our Lord would have seen all of those different attitudes, and he would have also seen our attitude towards money. There's a variety of attitudes. Some people think that money is pure and simply the product of all of their hard work and effort collectively through their life. And certainly hard work and effort, ingenuity, all of that plays and allows for a person to have advancement and greater wealth and things of that. But we must remember that all of our money, all of our asset, all of our wealth plays into the whole mystery of divine providence. Our money and our wealth, our status, is not outside of this divine plan and providence of God. For reasons that are beyond our understanding, it's according to God's providence that we have our efforts, abilities, and all of that, and likewise that we have our degree of personal wealth and asset. And we all know that there is a difference but we may not always comprehend that there is also a tremendous similarity when we see it from the perspective of divine providence. So let me explain. Imagine I have here in front of me different sized jars that are filled with water, a little shot glass, a teacup, a, a milk glass, you know, a pitcher, a bucket, and then a huge barrel. Obviously, the barrel holds more water than the little glass on the end here, but all of them holding a different amount, through divine providence, they all similarly are full, complete, that we have everything we need from God, that God does not forget us, but God has given us everything we need to satisfy the longings of our heart. Or sure, maybe in numerically there might be a huge barrel or a little cup, but all of them are full. Our Lord has given us everything we need. Our Lord never forgets us or leaves us to our own devices. And so to approach our understanding of wealth and money and assets, to see it as part of the function of divine providence and in his providence, one reason why he might give a barrel versus a little cup is in his providence, he wants those that have more to be able to give more, to be able to help build up the kingdom more compared to those who are able to give just a little less or a lot less. But still, all of those little cups and jugs, they're all full. Divine providence has filled you with all of the grace, blessing, and love that you need to carry out the will of God. And so our Lord, as he looked in the temple long ago, and as he looks out today at us in our treasury moment, he looks into the depths of the heart, and that is how he looked at that widow who came forward and just deposited two little pennies. Not much money at all. But that widow received great praise from Jesus, because our Lord, reading her heart, he saw her attitude towards donations. And likewise, our Lord, looking out at us, not only seeing our attitude towards money, but what is your attitude towards giving? What is your attitude towards donating? Do you hold on to all of that wealth and asset? Oh, it's all mine, and I'm not going to give any away. They should work as hard as I did and then they would have what they need. What is your attitude towards gift giving and especially the support of our parish? Is there some fear and trembling? If I give this donation, then I'm gonna have less and then I won't be able to meet all of the needs of my family or my kids or maybe enjoy some extra things in life. I'm afraid to give because maybe the money might run out in my retirement. And so if I give a lot, then where will I be? And so our Lord looks at all of our attitude towards giving 
he sees and acknowledges our real, true, uh, cautious, uh, prudential worries and concerns. But notice our Lord praises that widow because even though she gave only a few pennies, she made a tremendous sacrifice. For our Lord, if he were to teach us from the tabernacle, he would remind us that donating and giving is all tied to sacrifice. And this woman gave so much, it says she gave everything. Oh, our Lord may not be asking us to give every asset we have away, but our Lord does want us that in our gift giving, in our helping build up the kingdom, that there should be a sense of sacrifice, a degree of pain, a degree of giving up as we make the donations, that it simply should not be, well, I've been blessed and I have all of this big barrel of cash so I can give a lot of way, but boy, there's still a lot and, you know, it really wasn't painful to do. So there really wasn't much sacrifice. Our Lord is teaching us through this, this woman giving the two pennies that our Lord desires that our gifts would include a degree of sacrifice. So again, thinking of the different water jugs in front of us, the little cups up to the barrel, certainly somebody may have barrels of money and they're able to give a huge volume compared to the little cup like the old lady giving the two pennies. But although there's different dollar amounts, again, there can be a similarity between them. There can be an equality of sacrifice given. Our Lord says that the lady who gave the few little pennies offered a greater sacrifice from those people who gave from all of the surplus wealth, let's say, in their barrel of money, where there was really no pain, there was really no sacrifice. So our Lord teaches that donations and giving not only help advance the goodness of the parish and church, but it is also a way to concretely sacrifice, which is all connected to our Lord's cross. He gave the perfect sacrifice of offering himself on the cross, donating his life, let's say, to build us up to be members of his kingdom. And so our donations at Mass and our other works of charity are a concrete way that when we make the sacrifice, we are making Christ's sacrifice on the cross present and alive. And so it is no coincidence that we pass the basket right before the offertory and Eucharistic prayer begins here at Mass, where our Lord's death and resurrection are made present to us. And then our Lord comes forth in the Holy Eucharist. He offers himself to us because he wants to show us his great generosity, his great sacrifice to give us an example to imitate and follow. But then as we receive the gift of his donated life through the Holy Eucharist, he then wants to strengthen us because the final point of the story of this lady who gave so little is that money, donations, sacrifice is all about trust. Do we trust in divine providence that regardless of where we are from a cup up to the big barrel, do we trust that our Lord has loved us enough that he has truly filled us up with the blessings that he desires us to have and to use? And do we trust him enough that when we make the sacrifice, again, it doesn't matter if it's a small amount of money or the big barrel full of money, we can all make the same degree of sacrifice. Do we trust him that if we give part of ourselves away and all of our hard work, all of our effort, all of our assets and money, if we give any of that away, 
Do we trust that our Lord will still care for us and that even as we give away, he will still fill us up. He will still take care of us. He will still satisfy all of our needs. He will still help us make ends meet, help the retirement money, help to the college fund and all of that. Do we trust that if we join in his sacrifice on the cross, that he will not abandon us. And here I'm speaking financially and in our needs. He will not abandon us, but he will always take care of us. Our Lord in his sacrifice was greatly rewarded with the resurrection. Our sacrifices are a sign of trusting in God. And so as we come forward to receive this Holy Eucharist, as our Lord has been watching us in a sense in his treasury moment like he did long ago, he sees your attitude towards money and wealth. How does he want to change that? He sees your attitude towards gift giving, sacrificial giving. How does he need to change that? He sees your attitude towards sacrifice and joining with his cross. How can he help you to go deeper? And more than anything, he sees your degree of trust in him. Do not be afraid to trust in our Lord. He never abandons us. He is always ready to meet our needs. He is always ready to satisfy the depths of our heart even as we participate in the giving and in the sacrificing and the work of building up the kingdom. As our Lord looks out to us today and in a few moments when we have our treasury moments, may we make an act of trust to sacrifice, to give, to trust in divine providence that he will never abandon you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Lord is always ready to help us, and so filled with trust, we offer to him these prayers and petitions. Let us pray for our church leaders. May the Holy Spirit guide them in their efforts to build up the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, they strive for peace and bring an end to war and conflict. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are facing adversity or burden of any kind, may Jesus calm their fears and bring them consolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and those who minister to them, may God's grace bring them comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And may we always defend the dignity and sanctity of human life, especially the unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for Helen Burgess, who this Mass being offered, and all those who have died, especially those in our book of remembrance this month of November. May they soon rest in the eternal peace of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now let us pause, cover from our hearts, our own personal intentions. For these special needs, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now let us pray to St. Michael for the purification and freedom of the Catholic Church in America. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are God, in whose name we humbly pray, and do thou send to us heavenly hosts by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who wander through the world to the ruin of souls. Amen. Heavenly Father, fill us with the gifts of your Holy Spirit. Give us a greater trust in the ways of your Son, Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand to the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gift offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, 
and Daniel, our bishop, his brother Bishop Lewis, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul. Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures which he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me.
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today at 6.30 in Hartgrader Hall, we'll have our next Catholic Forum. This is that question and answer opportunity. So that's uh, tonight at 6.30 in Hartgrader Hall. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. And our closing song is number 883. Hail, Holy Queen, number 883.